um, getting lost and um, opening, clearing my mind, clearing myself, being open to what um, is going to come through. And I talk about it in terms of manifestation. You want to make art. Why do you make art? Because I have to. <laughs> I make art because I have to. Oh well, I was always I was always drawn to it. I was I was drawing all my life when I was a kid, and um, between music, I just automatically picked up music and uh, art. And my parents did follow through with with art, and actually gave me classes, allowed me to um, go see a private teacher because there really wasn't anything. I grew up in Vermont, a tiny little four-room schoolhouse. But there was a there was an artist there in town who she gave classes, and I became a private student of hers. And then I I would rake her lawn. I'd do anything to get those classes, and I ended up paying for them myself by working for her. Went to Bennington College on a fellowship. Three years I was there, and uh, I learned how to think and how to. Um, how to get the information that I needed to get. Bennington. At Bennington, I um, was very fortunate in, in working with a fabulous artist, Judy North, um, who was, for me, and for, I think, many of the students who worked with her, absolutely revolutionary. And um, she, she saw, um, she saw her students, and she saw creativity in them, and she accepted and nurtured all of us. She was really the person who uh, really influenced me the most to begin to look inside, to find out what my color palette was, to find out what I knew about wine, to um, discover what uh, I could manifest in the world. We developed, I helped her build um, stained glass studio and a stained glass glass blowing studio. And I stayed involved in glass for quite a, many years. Went to California, opened up another stained glass studio and a glass blowing studio there. I moved into uh, administration, uh, healthcare administration, got a second degree in healthcare administration and uh, worked as a, in the corporate world for several years. And eventually um, I went to, uh, I decided I wanted to do international healthcare. And I went to Guatemala to study Spanish, fell in love with the country, and never left. Was I was uh, up in Washington for a while, and I saw, I walked in, it was a very, very curious thing, I walked into a store, there, um, very unusual gift store, and I saw a piece of paper, paper bowl. Turned out it was made in Brazil. Later I found out through a lot of research that these uh, bowls were made in Brazil and Vietnam. And I was really fascinated by the bowl because it was um, recycled newspaper and, and I was very interested in conservation and um, recycling and, um, and I thought they were like really brilliant. I had been working before with a group of um, handicapped young adults in an organization called ADISA. So we began working and I trained them how to work with this paper and they made series of bowls. Every once in a while I would go and show them a new idea, a picture I'd seen in a magazine or something I'd seen online that maybe they ought to consider. I just had an idea one day before I let this whole thing go. I wanted to see if I could work on a flat surface with this paper ribbon. And I really recall the day I, I took several of the elements that we had been working with, with the bowls, and I just put them on my table and I started moving them around and I went, and I knew instantly. I just, in my gut, I really do. This, this had, this was something I'd never seen before, and it was limitless. I just felt limitless to me.